Hey beautiful people, welcome to another episode. Today we're going to paint on coasters. I know this sounds strange, but we're going to paint on these little bar coasters. Yes, I have a long history of painting on non-traditional uh, mediums. Now lately, I've been getting these from the bar. Actually, <laughs> one of my bartender friends gave me a whole freaking stack because they get them for free and she liked the idea. So, I've been painting on these. Been doing this for quite some time. Um, back here, you can see a couple examples. Uh, from my uh, Hipster King series that I'm just kind of playing around with. Nothing too serious, but uh, they're kind of flow of conscious, non-precious type of paintings that are free and I can just go at it, not worry about what I'm doing, and just make something cool. That's what I'm doing. These, these are all acrylics here. You might have seen my acrylic demo the other day. I also paint in oil on these. So you can do different things like that. Like that. And it's simple. All you have to do is prime the side. If this starts to warp one way or the other, just put a little paint on the back and that's all. For oil, I usually use gesso. It's a nice white uh, base coat. When I'm doing stuff on acrylic like this, I will just take some white paint, goop it on, and just let it dry. So, you can see this one does not have any, any paint on the back. Um, also, note, do not use these now as coasters because if you put stuff on here, it's just gonna get shitty and look horrible and ruin your painting. So today, we're going to paint on some coasters. I already have a couple primed up uh, from my last painting session uh, from when I was painting those back there. Uh, I pretty much just took whatever acrylic paint I had left and just smooshed it around, not caring about color or anything. You know, it might go this way, that way, I don't know yet. Um, we're going to paint some Something just kind of free flow, uh, probably similar to these goofy little flat figures I've been drawing and painting lately. Uh, not necessarily um, the anatomy might not be perfect, but I don't care. It's art. You can do whatever you want. Remember that. You don't have to paint realistic. You can paint whatever the you want. So let's get at it. Let me get the studio set up and we will start painting. So before I start painting, I just wanna comment also on how I set up my, my palette. Again, this is just my acrylic palette, which is a disposable um, sheet of uh, disposable uh, paper plate. And I go from go from white to yellow to kind of that cold yellow which is the um, yellow ochre which is great for skin tones by the way. And we go into the cadmium red light the richer Rizlum, then the sap green, and then the Prussian blue. If I would be adding, say, like a burnt sienna, like this here, I'd probably show that at the end, and then maybe throw, if I'm using black, I'd throw black here. But again, I don't use black very often. And the only other thing I may use is this uh, gel medium. It helps... Uh, with transparency and flow of the paint. I'm gonna leave it in here. 
but it looks opaque, uh, but it dries clear. Um, and just a plug, uh, my last video was, or let's see, episode 9, I should say, uh, is all about three ways to use gel medium and make your acrylic paintings all that much better. Welcome to the voiceover. So painting on these coasters have been something I've been doing for a while. Um, on this painting here specifically, I'm just using a little blue paint just to get some basic shapes and then filling in some volume of color just to kind of get a feel for what, what and where the painting is going. Um, filling in the background too. Uh, so I like to work on all aspects of the painting as, as I go through the process. After I get some of the basic colors down, I start to see where I want to push the colors. Um, the hair was a little too close to the skin tone, so I started out uh, putting in some highlights. Uh, currently going through some more detail uh, with some darks and then pushing lights into them just to get a feel for where the painting is going again and I continue working pushing highlights layers and layers of color to add kind of a volume to the painting and you can hear Rory in the background yowling and I go through kind of that build up layer thing over and over again pushing darks pushing lights I should just say, for posterity, this is in the old studio, so uh, the paintings were done a few months ago, actually probably about six or seven months ago now. Continually adding detail. Not all detail has to be what you think of detail, but it is putting marks down on the canvas, or in this case, the, the coaster. Um, refining things you don't like while you're painting. Uh, I didn't like her hair still, so going back to kind of a blonde with then pushing more browns back into it, so blondes become more highlights. But that's all being influenced by what I did before. Again, jumping around. And remember, doing hair, you don't have to do every strand. Hair is more like, like a piece of volume of color. And here, you know, I'm just adding some funky, fun stuff in the, the background. Don't forget the background or the negative space. Adds interest. You know, this kind of crescenty moon thing with some swirlies. It just adds something to the painting. Gives it context, too. Uh, gives it some mystery at that. So there you have it. Let's go to the next one. Again, sketching out in a thin coat of blue. Trying to get detail where major elements will go. And refining as I go. You know, it doesn't have to be a perfect drawing. Pushing in some flat colors. Sometimes you do that in uh, the details and the landmarks that you've put down before, kind of get erased. 
but you can always put those back in or once you start doing highlights and, and shadows they get get in place. I kind of wanted this one to have a kind of a wildernessy background um, but I didn't want that to be prevalent so I just threw in some green and I'll be going back into it uh, to give it more definition and volume again. Again, painting is not always about just laying one flat color down or just here a brush stroke, there a brush stroke. Sometimes it is layering and layering those colors to make them richer and more vibrant uh, using gel medium, especially in acrylic will help with this. It gives it light, it gives it movement, it gives it something to look at. You know, there's so many artists that just draw something and paint it like a coloring book. And you know, if that's your style, that's your style. But if you want to take your painting to the next level, really push those layers of color on top of color because that all influences what you're doing. want to be in this video so ignore all the little chirpies and the kitties being kitties in the background. Again I work in multiple areas at multiple times because everything is influencing everything else. Uh, and I don't wash my brushes all the time between certain areas because you want some color harmony. Color harmony is important in a painting. Um, and when you're using the blue in, like in your shirt and you're using it as low lights in your skin, but you're adding some of the skin tone at the same time, there's a harmony between the colors because that blue is influencing the flesh tones. Again, as I look forward, adding details into the face blurry there because of my big old noggin and hair getting away. But of course when I paint I uh, get into the zone and forgetting the other things I'm doing at the same time. Pushing the hair, you know, so all of a sudden it's darker, looks better with that lighter blue and green background. I'm trying to have some movement in that hair too. And on these small paintings, you'll notice I'm flipping it around, looking at it from all angles, <clears throat> making sure that the composition is right. A great way to make sure Portions and, and composition is looking good. Flip your artwork upside down, walk back from it, and look at it in your perspective. You'll see all of your errors if, if that's what you're trying to avoid. You know, but sometimes painting is about being fun and loose and not caring about the, the, the details. And a lot of these closer paintings, that's what I'm doing. So here I'm going to show you the final products. Both of them after I sign of course. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please hit the like button below, subscribe. For more content like this and uh, I would love to hear if you guys do any non-traditional uh, art stuff like painting on I don't know whatever it might be or using homemade paints or something like that let me know in the comments below and this week I said I was going to be giving away a painting and that's this week so make sure you subscribe so you can possibly win that uh, painting. 
All right? All right. Back to the studio. Oh, I also forgot to say down below all my social media links. Now, if you like to see uh, what I'm up to, the paintings I'm finishing up, some of the cool uh, photos that I've been working on lately, uh, find it below, especially Instagram. I'm kind of more of an Instagram person than anywhere else, so hexa underscore creative. Like that. Like, like, like. Cool. Say hi over there too. Bye. Thank you.